Ciao Giovanni. Ciao. And uh, thank you for inviting us to the Overlook Hotel in the south of France. It's a pleasure. <laughs> so me and uh, Stefano, we had a joke because we thought this bar looked like uh, the Overlook Hotel, you know, with uh, The Shining. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we're waiting for Jack Torrance now. Right, so the question I want to ask you is, um, uh, there's a nice story behind the name of uh, Rivale, and uh, you you came up with this. Could you tell us the story, please? Uh, actually, by walking at the harbor in France, actually, I saw a boat, very nice boat, that is made by Riva, you know, like a big Italian manufacturer, and uh, it was called the Rivale, and I said, uh, Wow, that's a nice name. So I called up Riva and they asked me, so are you interested in buying the boat? No, actually I'm interested in buying the brand. <laughs> so uh, we, took the, we took the name from them and uh, I think it perfectly fit our bike. Uh, it's great in all the languages, so it's, I think it's a very, very nice name. A yearning once more to be returning Better turn this thing off. <laughs> Greetings from uh, sunny south of France, and uh, as you can see behind me, it's uh, beautiful castles, but uh, not so beautiful weather. Um, been testing the Rival 800 today, but uh, it's been raining, which isn't the best. But uh, luckily for us, it was dry in the morning, so uh, I got a little taster of how the Rivala feels like on the dry this morning. Maybe if I'm lucky, I get a little ride tomorrow as well. Anyway, um, it's, uh, it's got a very quite extreme riding position for MV Augusta. So the seat is quite high and um, you sat far forward. You know, it's a typical uh, Motard uh, style. And um, you can see MV Augusta have gone, um, you know, quite big on the styling elements. So you see all these beautiful things here and uh, also the front you know which which is sort of like a small reversed version of the F4 front end believe it or not <laughs> and um, whilst uh, there's a bit of thunder behind me I'm, um, I'm just contemplating how um, how good this bike is because uh, it's an extreme and it's a, it's a fun fun bike but um, I have had good use for the traction control today. So I've gone all the way from uh, 6 to traction control setting 1 this morning and um, obviously on, on this kind of weather you need lots of traction control. Uh, I wouldn't mind uh, <laughs> some ABS brakes as well on a day like today because these brakes are very very sharp, very powerful and um, MV Augusta have, uh, yeah, they've given the Rival uh, uh, the best you know, items uh, such as brakes and wheels and and tires and uh, and you know styling handling engine comes straight from the Brutala and uh, F3 800 and it's got 125 horsepower um, it's got lots of torque and uh, it's got a strong mid-range the engine is um, around four five thousand rpm it's very very um, lively so already you've got uh, lots of torque but uh, the top end is just incredible and the induction noise you get when you really open up the throttle is uh, incredible. Uh, you have to try it to believe it. And um, so it's got slightly, you know, it's slightly different to the Brutale in quite a few ways. Right, the Brutale 800 is also a naked sport bike, but the Rivale 800 is a more, more extreme naked sort of sport bike. So you see here, you got the sort of 
wind guard or mud guards that you know you have on an off-road bike but here you got incorporated uh, blinkers so it's not going to be as cheap putting this these on the ground as uh, as an off-road bike you got mirrors on the side here which are they are sort of retractable as well so let's see if i can do it oh yes it's a bit slippery now you see here so if you're on the motorway and you want to um, uh, vi widen your view uh, on what's happening behind you, you can just do this and same, go back in again. Also, like this. So we first saw this sort of solution on the Ducati Hypermotard and um, it's sort of, um, you know, it's, it's a tidy, it's to tidy up the, the front end here so it's completely flat and uh, Riding in the city or, you know, you want to pass some cars, you just do like this and it's really narrow. Um, so, when it comes to, uh, to the Rival uh, and uh, handling, it's, it's obviously, it's a mixture between um, a Brutale naked and, uh, and, and, a, and a Supermotard or Hypermotard bike. And um, because it's not... Um, Suspension is not as soft as on a Supermoto, so you've got a little bit more travel in the, in the suspension here compared to a Brutale or an F3, but uh, it's not as much as a proper Supermotard. So it's not, um, you know, it's not a Motard. It's just, uh, it's just taking some styling and some handling characteristics and some, you know, and to make a very, very exciting motorcycle. So. Got to say that uh, <laughs> at the moment the Rivala 800 is my favorite MV Agusta for many many reasons. Not just because it's the most exciting to ride, but also because I really really like the styling, like the how you ride and how you sat on top of the front wheel sort of thing. So um, I don't think you would have doubted that I would have given this bike thumbs up anyway. But uh, you know after riding it today, it's uh, two thumbs up. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting a dry day on the Rivala. So ciao from uh, sunny south of France.
Brian. Hello, Tor. Hey. Good so uh, tell us, uh, why uh, is the ride-by-wire better on the 2013 Rivala than on previous MV Augusta models? I can give you a, a simple reply to a very complex situation. The um, Rivale 800 has a completely new strategy inside of the engine ECU. So uh, let's not just to say the map is different. The map is basically fuel and spark and, uh, and so forth. But let's say the, how the ECU thinks. We went into the, the strategy of the ECU and we completely changed it. So we sped up the amount of time that the ECU needs to interpret your question. Because with drive-by-wire throttle body, you're not telling the bike what to do. You're asking the bike what to do. And we have to interpret what you're asking for and try to give you back what you want. But uh, as you know, riding a motorcycle, you're never at constant throttle. You are always in a transient condition. So we have to interpret your question as your question is continuing to change and try to follow you with a response. At the same time, uh, our system is really complex because we have three different maps, three different modes and custom map and traction control, which is uh, adjustable on eight levels and off. So while we're interpreting what you would like, we also have to see available grip interpret what we need to give you with traction and give that back to you. So it's a complicated, uh, very complicated scenario and uh, the new strategy really makes a big difference. Mm. But I presume that um, this is uh, something that you work on con always at MV Augusta. It's not like, uh, okay, you feel that, sometimes you can feel that, okay, we've got the perfect aesthetic bike now. But uh, that, that's not the case with electronics, is it? Because it's constantly evolving and, you know, it's going to get better and better and better, isn't it? Electronics, you hit on a really important point, and you can see that today with your smartphone. Uh, electronics are changing incredibly rapidly, and uh, you constantly have updates. Your smartphone is automatically updating itself almost uh, every 10 days. There's always a, a new update for your, your smartphone. Uh, and the same thing is going on with motorcycle electronics. The, the updates are continually going on. When you do a design, Adrian did a fantastic design with a bike. Graphically, it's done. You turn the page and you start working on the next project. With the electronics, the project never stops. And not only that, uh, we're continually working on applying the new strategies to existing bikes. And we make those maps available through our dealer network to all of our customers. So any MV customer that has an MV bike previous to the Rivali in this case, he can uh, very soon go to his uh, MV dealer, he can in five minutes for free get his bike updated with the same level of strategy that the, uh, the Rivali has. And back in 2010 when we had three models of bike, it was one thing. Today we have 14 models of bikes. So it's a tremendous amount of work. Mm. Yeah, and um, so I guess it's a bit of a uh, silly question then, because as we as we said that uh, it's constantly evolving. But uh, what 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 what's the next sort of big thing uh, regarding electronics and that sort of thing for MV Augusta? I think we've got uh, a couple things that are right around the corner that we're going to make available for customers. The first thing will probably be uh, a blipper downshift. Uh, our upshift now is working really really well. I don't know if you had a chance to really appreciate the, I did, yeah. the upshift. You've been driving around town at slow speed, small throttle. Yes, lower RPM as well. That's impressed me. Yeah, yeah. and uh, not only uh, it's not only a race shift uh, where it works at uh, wide open throttle and, uh, and so forth. So it's complicated because uh, with an electronic shifter, it's not only taking the power away to get, the, get it to shift, it's also giving the power back to you in a smooth way because the easiest thing to do is cut the spark, get it to shift, and then give you back full power immediately. But what you have is, like on a race bike, wide open throttle, the bike pitches you forward, shifts, and then pitches you backwards. And uh, we worked really hard on that to get a smooth transition. One, so you don't have the pitching forward, so it's not taking all of the torque away, just enough to get it into a position where we have free play on the gear dogs, make the shift, and give the torque back to you in a progressive way, so it, it's really smooth. Mm. Uh, can you say anything about um, ABS systems and that sort of thing for, for a bike like the Rivala? Will that be available sometime in the future? Or Yeah, we have a, um, a roadmap uh, with all of our bikes with ABS in the future. Uh, our partner Bosch is working with us. Unfortunately, we're making so many new bikes every year 
that uh, we would take up 150% of the Bosch motorcycle personnel to work only on MV Agusta bikes, which is not possible. So uh, we're, we're implementing the ABS on our bikes as fast as we can with our partner. They're absolutely fantastic. It's really the best ABS system on the market. We have it on our Brutale bikes and on the F4, and uh, very soon on the, on the other bikes as well. Because hmm. uh, it's one thing, it's got fantastic brakes, the Rivala 800, and, uh, and uh, some people uh, would probably like some ABS on the, on the rain as well, but uh, I, I enjoyed it as it was. So. Okay, with that I will say uh, thank you Brian and, uh, and, um, and uh, hopefully we'll see uh, more good electronics on Vigustas in the future. Absolutely. I think we're setting the standard really for, for drive-by wire now. So we're finally to the point where we're certainly ahead of the competition and we're going to keep uh, pushing forward. <laughs>
And when, um, when you were first sort of given this project, when, when the bosses at MV came to you and said, right, we're going to have a like Mozart uh, or Mozart type style uh, mm. motorcycle, what, what were your first uh, thoughts of uh, you know, design wise? Well, I mean, you know, we'd, MV Augusta don't make motocross bikes. So that's the first thing. And obviously, what we need to do is kind of mix some of the elements of uh, a motocross bike, if you like, with what the, you know, with our sort of uh, sports DNA. So you know, it's kind of a sort of contamination, if you like, of the, some of the parts you see on a on a motocross bike, which could be this kind of almost retro uh, number plate hanger unit at the back here, or it could be the proportion of, you know, mostly the proportion of the bike is, is fundamental to, to kind of setting up what the bike's about. So you're gonna, the actual silhouette of the bike, if you like, is something that defines what, what you're seeing. If, you know, you have a pre preconception of what the bike is in terms of the silhouette of the bike, and then what happens in it is, is important as well. But, you know, little things like, you know, having this, this front headlight very, very close to the, to the front, um, forks and very very pa almost parallel with the front forks kind of relates to the motocross kind of feel this area here the, the overall sort of silhouette the proportion and also the most important thing really not only from a styling point of view but from a dynamics point of view is is uh, where the rider sits with relationship to the the, the wheelbase so we've pushed the rider forward uh, compared to the F3 or the Brutale we've moved the rider forward you know a considerable distance so you're really over the front end of the bike when you're riding it which obviously, you know, relates to a motard kind of rider position, what we're looking for. Yeah, because I can see that, um, I can see there's a tall seat, uh, there's a um, sort of uh, wind protection for your hands, and uh, it's got uh, foldable mirrors, but um, at the very front, at the mudguard, uh, that's more uh, MV than uh, off-road, uh, definitely. Yeah. Well, we, we definitely didn't want, well, you know, this is where this kind of, this, you know, as I say, is a kind of contamination, but, you know, it has to be an MV at the end of the day. And, and what we tried to avoid is the kind of almost classic kind of uh, beak or, you know, high mud guard at the front of the bike. So uh, we basically, we looked at, you know, the combining the fuel tank with the side panel with the, with the front mud guard to create a sort of uh, almost like a shield graphic. And that's something that sort of sets up the, the graphic from the front of the bike visually. So just further to the front uh, mudguard, which is uh, very interesting um, in terms of uh, design, I think. And stood here looking at it, it looks like a sort of inverted sort of arrow style. But very interesting. <laughs> so uh, how did you come up with that? Um, well, uh, yeah, I, uh, as I said, we, we were looking for something to give it some a, a fairly strong identity from the front you know, uh, view. And basically those three elements were very much separate on the sketches. They were like, you know, there was a fuel tank, the side part, and the, and the uh, front mudguard. And, and basically, you know, it came up, uh, you know, in the clay phase where we actually modeled the thing in three dimensions. That came out just by experiment. And so that kind of, you know, developed when we did the three dimensional phase of the project, which is, you know, the best bit of the bike, really. That's where you get to see the bike for its first time. You know, the idea is a sketch and then you turn it into reality in 3D and that's what really matters because that's what you get at the end of the day you know, that's the bike you see on the road and you don't see the sketch necessarily so you know that's where you can make these you know you can kind of resolve things and and also kind of create you know things that you didn't necessarily consider initially on the sketch so yeah I think it's pretty you know quite a nice strong graphic and it relates to our uh, sports bike because our sports bike have a very similar kind of um, form at the front of the bike on the front fairing so you know when you put the, this next to an F3 you can see they're kind of connected you know, but in different ways you know it's a re as I said like all the other all the parts of the bike it's kind of like a reinterpretation of the, of, of the the styling cues that you see on our sports bike or other bikes. Quite a few subtle details really on the Rivala it's, it's nothing that uh, that uh, you know Subtle details. Yeah, on an F4, let's say, which has a big fairing that you can. Yeah, I think. I'll, well, obviously, there's a lot less bodywork on this bike, so it's, I suppose the same amount of information is is uh, kind of concentrated in a smaller area. So there's quite a lot going on, you know, uh, with regards to the uh, the surfaces and changes, and you know, to get this kind of sensuality in there and stuff that you know is characteristic on our bikes. The, the thing is that it. it it, once you've concluded the, the sort of three-dimensional phase, if that looks good as, a, as an entire volume in one monochromatic colour, 
brown, which is not the best colour to perhaps um, you know envisage something. But uh, yeah, if, you, if it looks good there for sure, when you when you start to divide up the, the volumes and then put the colour on it, it, it you know it's going to make. The, if it looks good there, it'll only look better when you're finished with the uh, you know the final bike. And obviously, there's a few refinements to make in the in the sort of last phase of the project. So yeah. So it won the prize, uh, most beautiful bike of Eichma last year. Yeah, so that was uh, uh, will incredible. Will we get the same <laughs> prize next uh, or this year? Um, well, you know, it's not about prizes really. It's just uh, for me, it's just about making you know respect to what the brand stands for. It's you know the prizes for Eichma is you know is is great and and says you know that people appreciate. The work that maybe the sort of energy that's gone into the project, but you know, it's more important than that is it stands for what the brand, you know, the brand stands for. That's what you know. You don't, I don't do it to win egg. <laughs> do you do it to, to do a great bike? Well, you know, which has some has something special about it, and hopefully, you know, as well as being a, an incredible bike to ride dynamically, when you when you put it in your garage at the end of the day, it's something you want to spend maybe five minutes having a look at, which is m maybe not the case with every bike on the market. So I'd like to think, you know, people will buy this bike and, and sort of enjoy look <laughs> looking at it as much as riding it. You know, it's, it's just that, really. Okay, Adrian, so uh, I'll say thank you for talking to us. And, uh, no worries. I uh, hope I'll uh, see you soon with something equally spectacular. Well, the next one should be, yeah, it'll be interesting. So, yeah, see you soon. <laughs>
25 horsepower, but uh, you know, on the throttle you get lots of uh, oomph and power from uh, four, five, six thousand RPM and up. So, um, and also the brakes are very sharp with very special sort of racing um, calipers with an uh, extra bite. So uh, the initial bite from the brakes is uh, incredible. So you need lots of front uh, tire grip for uh, for them to work properly. Otherwise, um, uh, they are slightly difficult to modulate if um, if uh, if you're not used to them. Because if you grab too much, then you know too much is too much. But um, we had enough grip in on the wet to, to be able to, to stop uh, sufficiently. So uh, so uh, the brakes are great. I'd love to try the Rival 800 on a track day, but unfortunately um, that's not been the case this time. But maybe in the future. Uh, the um, seat position is still great. It's uh, forward and quite high, it's sitting quite high up, and uh, gives great control of the front wheel and the wide handlebars. So uh, so I've enjoyed uh, riding the Rival uh, on the mountain roads. Today, gorgeous roads. Been there a few times before, and uh, you know, never disappoints. It's a beautiful view and everything, which uh, hopefully you'll see from my uh, onboard video. The um, even though it was uh, slightly damp because uh, all the rain from uh, yesterday hadn't dried up properly. At least we had sun, and uh, lots of corners were dry enough to, to go properly for it. You know, so uh, so we had a proper test today, and um, I just enjoy. Uh, the riding style that uh, you can achieve on the Rival 800. It's different from Brutale 800 because uh, Brutale is, uh, uh, you know, the weight distribution between the front and the right, uh, the front and the rear end isn't the same. So on the Rival is very Rival is very front end biased, the riding position, and that gives for a great handling bike. And the steering is so quick, you know, as quick as you like. You know, you can do uh, left to right uh, hairpin corners. Easy as uh, easy peasy. So uh, it's uh, quick steering. It's um, not nervous because it's got the right amount of weight above that front wheel, and uh, that's exactly what you need. Lots of weight over the front wheel that gives you that, uh, uh, along with a wide handlebar, gives you a really quick steering bike with a good feeling on the handling part. So the rider is obviously a big part of the handling because. Um, Standing still, the Revolver has got, uh, oh, what was it? It's about 48% uh, 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 rear and uh, 52 front, and then you, you add the rider, uh, and uh, you got even more weight over the front. So, uh, yet, uh, lots of uh, people have sort of complained a little bit that it's not the best bike to wheel and that sort of stuff. And, uh, well, it's just. Um, it wheels easily enough if you uh, just turn traction control off or at level one. And uh, second gear, you probably you need to clutch it up, but um, then it, you know, then it's uh, ready to, to have some fun. And uh, Rival 800, it is a fun bike. It's more a fun bike than anything else. And um, yet, it's a it's a great alternative for the quirky. And uh, if you don't find a monster and that sort of bike exciting enough, then Rivala and Rivala is uh, much more aggressive and it's uh, it's made to be uh, more of a hooligan bike than uh, even than uh, Ducati's Hypermotor and uh, also more extreme than the Prilla Dos Duro. So uh, so it's um, um, you know lightweight, fun, and uh, I believe that. Uh, Quite a few people find the Rival 800 to be quite pleasing to the eye as well when it stands, stood still. So um, after the dry day, uh, I'm still very, very happy with the Rival 800, and um, I, you know, it's <laughs> hard to sort of uh, say this, but if you find that uh, the MV Augusta Brutale is too bland you've always got the Rivala, which is even more exciting. In fact, it's uh, probably the most exciting MV Agusta to date. And uh, it's quite, an ex uh, quite, a, quite a statement that, but uh, the Rivala is made for fun and to be ridden a little bit 
on the wild side, shall we say. So uh, with that I'll say goodbye from uh, south of France and uh, see you soon. Bye.